Welcome to the Concert Queen Connect. I'm so excited this week to have a very special guest, someone who is a DJ, a producer, uh, the founder and creative director of Vinyl Ranch. I'm actually wearing a shirt. This is the first show that I've ever worn someone's merch. merch. Yeah. Um, Mr. David Wrangler, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me also. I uh, thank it. you for being here. We it's tried, you coming. were going to be like my first guest and then that fell through back in September of 2020. And here we are now, 30, lucky number 32. And I love that I'm wearing, this is what the, literally the first thing, I'm wearing this shirt and you're wearing mm. Jonathan Terrell's shirt. Jonathan Terrell. <laughs> Who, I think you introduced me to him. I think that's now very, that I think about it. very, very likely. Um, I don't remember when that was, but I think we went to see him at, did we go see him at Sagebrush? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We saw him at Sagebrush. And then ever since then, I mean, like, yeah, because you living in Tulsa and then just connected with him and I mean, amazing people. And I feel like you have this whole network here in Austin that you've always had, even though you don't live here. Because mm -hmm. you haven't like formally lived here. I've actually never lived in Austin. I went to high school right outside of, not right outside. Um, in Blanco, Texas, which mm -hmm. is about an hour outside of town, and then kind of hung out in Austin a shit ton in the 90s, like the mid to late 90s, but never have actually lived here. And even still, like, you know, last year when I was trying to move here, I just couldn't. It's like the, the universe is like stiff arming me out. Isn't like, that amazing how that works, though? It's strange. And I follow those cues, too. So I feel like, you know, the invisible hand, like I feel like the invisible hand is saying this, but it's also sometimes guiding you places. Yeah. So I feel like with the Austin thing, it's like I keep getting stiff armed, but I feel like it's kind of the the hand is moving me to Austin. Finally, so. <laughs> the things are aligned. Well, FSG Prince, mm -hmm. you know, who does all of right, all of Vinyl Ranch as far as merch. Yeah, or merch and fulfillment. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. basically like I couldn't. There's no way that this machine could continue rolling down the road. Because I was at the point where I transitioned all of my merchandise and fulfillment to those dudes. Um, I was having to do everything on my own. I had an employee at an office in Houston above the Continental Club. And then uh, I kept trying to leave town for months at a time and just everything, would, uh, it wouldn't fall apart. But I slept better <laughs> at night knowing it was being tended to full time by a professional. Yeah. Um, as opposed to like me hiring and like trying to incite someone to be excited about it, um, inspiration and excitement to hire somebody to manage it for you know three months to six months so yeah those guys have like i couldn't say enough and in, incredible things about it. everyone at fsg if you need printing yeah merchandise design everything those guys are like top top tier in my in my opinion FSG is. fine southern gentlemen find someone other prince yeah that's funny yeah when you say fsg because someone in my family makes fun of because my brother and i say fsg all the time like Do you? People, yeah. Well, we we talk about it often. Yeah. And uh, my brother's wife is always like, always laughs. She's like, what does that even mean? Maybe that's, maybe I got it from you then. <clears throat> that's yeah. where like you say FSG. So I think I kind of just picked that up. And I assume everyone knows what that means. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Fine Southern Fine gentlemen. Fine Southern gentlemen in Austin, Prince. Texas. Yeah. yeah. So you, I feel like Vinyl Ranch <clears throat> and it's funny how, I mean, we were connected through Instagram. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about that February of 2020. You had a show that was right before everything shut down, and you were about to do this big showcase, which was a stacked lineup. And then obviously everything, the world just shut down. And that was, I remember when I was first meeting you, that was such a big transition period for you because you'd been on the road, right? Like some kind of crazy amount yeah. of days, and you were DJing and touring around. Are you, are you talking about the South by Southwest thing? Yeah, you were going to do country? something for South by Southwest, but like yeah. before, prior to that, I mean, you're just go, 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 go. Yeah, I was on the grind for a hot minute. <clears throat> I think at the end of 2019, I did a tour with the Black Lips and then some parties with Vice. And rolling into 2020, I kind of thought like, oh, this is going to be a really insane year because January and February were typically historically pretty slow just for everyone in the music mm -hmm. industry. And so historically january nothing would happen no one would work kind of like lick your wounds and prep for the next you know <laughs> three to six months uh -huh. most people are just getting ready for south by i do country music events also so also so i'm sure it's funny um so houston rodeo is in february late february so for me it really kicks off in february so i have even fewer weeks to kind of recover but um we rolled into rodeo excuse me january was busy for some reason i don't remember what happened 
But I just recall thinking, I wish I had one month to just stay home and like not do anything Oof. because I typically would have January to yeah. chill and it never came. And then, then, then it did come. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize to everyone on behalf of yeah, you shut down, my shut selfish down the desire world. to take a break. Yeah. Now we've had a lot of months. So doing everything that you're doing as far as, I mean, I just feel like that's a lot of like, cause you're the creative director, you're the yeah. founder. So when did Vinyl Ranch start? Cause I don't think we've ever talked about that. Mm, technically it started in 2007 and it's it like the chicken a, and the egg you know, like which night. came first yeah well <laughs> <laughs> the vinyl ranch as it exists now like as you know it right now as mm-hmm. most people know it now is really only five years old but it started as a dj night in houston in 2007 so it was my friend and i threw a part like a birthday party essentially it was my birthday party and he had some other reason it wasn't his <sighs> birthday but um we just kind of had decided to do this country music dj party um, and at the time I was DJing in nightclubs, I was not DJing. There was no one DJing country music. Um, so we just kind of created it out of fun. It was just fun and like weird. It was like, what could we do that no one else to our knowledge had ever done before? And he wasn't even a real DJ. He just had a bunch of country records. Oh. Yeah. So he actually, I relied heavily on him for the music collection. And then over the course of that, you know, two or three months that we planned the party and it was so hokey. It was like um, Party City. It looked like Party City. It was so bad. Like all these like <laughs> fake cowboy straw cowboy hats we bought from you know a dollar store and little guns on holsters we had this little horse on a like a what do you call those horses on springs uh-huh oh his, my name god. Was, his name was trigger the wonder horse <laughs> so we'd have girls get on the horse and bounce on the horse oh my god where's yeah, trigger these bad. days i don't know trigger's probably worth a pretty penny now <laughs> maybe in 10 years when there's like an actual legacy of something yeah we'll resurrect trigger um i think we ended up giving trigger to somebody long story long sorry we, so we did this party um, at this biker burnout bar called Leon's Lounge in Houston. And um, it was one of the spots where, like you walk in, there's like a long corridor with a shuffleboard deal. And um, they had uh, what they what kind of beer they serve, like Red Dog, Tall Boys. So it was like a... It was grimy. Yeah. For sure. Like all, 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 all you know, all, all the cool biker kids hung up there, like cyclists oh. and like the young bikers. I think their motorcycle club was called Toto Moto. Yeah. They would come and cause ruckus i actually have photos i need to send them to you at some point yeah but photos from the very first vinyl ranch party and it looks like the most perfectly staged curated creative directed image of like young attractive tattooed guys with like greaser haircuts and pomade and like girls with switchblade knives and like the a lone star beer sign in the background and they're all on the dance floor dancing to some insane uh, David Allen Coe song or something. And they've got their hands in there with beer cans. It's like the perfect beer ad. At some point, yeah, I, we should, have to see I should those. sell that to Lone Star. <laughs> it's really good. But the, yeah, essentially, that's kind of what it was. It was just a monthly DJ party. And then fast forward four years, I saw that no one was really doing anything like that in the marketplace. And decided like, oh, I can like monetize this super well around country music events and merchandise and and then another five years and now it's this yeah so it's but, this organism that's always kind of changing and evolving and i'm always kind of watching to see what i can you know technology pushes that and drives that quite a bit too so um yeah because there's so many yeah. layers to what you're doing there not is, only do you have like you said it. just from a party mm-hmm. perspective but then you have social media mm-hmm. which is its whole other animal that yeah. kind of just snowballed into you know this huge platform so if you're not following vinyl ranch you definitely should. It's an amazing, amazing account. Tell people about how that kind of, because it's just so unique because you're basically like blending in hip hop also with country, but just this fusion of amazing photoshopped memes and things that are just, I mean, that go viral essentially. Like Sometimes, yeah, yeah. So basically I've kind of, it took me a little while to realize this, but Vinyl Ranch is more like a hip hop project about country music, like mm-hmm. through the lens of hip hop culture, like remixing and all that sort of thing. So it's really just kind of this blender of, you know, of all things pop culture, things that I'm interested in, things that, you know, if you if you hang out with young people, like they're teaching you all the time. So I try and keep like a couple a couple young stallions Youngins. in the stable here and there. I mean, you know, just yeah. in general, it keeps you young, keeps you current to some degree. Obviously, I'm I've been wearing the same outfit for the past like four months, so I could probably according to Lupe, some, according to Lupe. yeah, Felipe. <laughs> Felipe. God bless Felipe. Uh, Fajita Flats at Instagram at Fajita Flats. Oh, that's, that's Fajita. Okay, got it. I think it's Fajita Flats official. Uh huh. Um, if you're not official, you're, you're unofficial. You know? Right. I need to step it up. These days. <laughs> well, and I feel like even with that, I mean, 
and I know something that you probably won't share, but I'm going to share is that you started the Dolly Parton challenge, just oh, yeah. your creativity of seeing the things that you started. Um, and I know there's several things like that, that your creativity kind of spawned off into something like that. And that was something that did go viral. Oh yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah, for sure. That's funny too, because everyone is, whether you're consciously taking or borrowing or copying or mimicking or, or very strongly influenced by something, we're constantly taking in cues and mm -hmm. um, subconsciously kind of like processing what's happening around us. So even if someone, I don't get upset if somebody is influenced by something that I create or uses it or borrows it, but there's a difference between like, I talk about tracing all the time. Like is a tracer an artist? Like, I don't know. You're tracing, you're tracing someone's work. So it's different from saying like, Oh, this person built this statue. It inspired me to build a statue that, is kind of similar to it or you know what I'm saying. The style. Yeah. As opposed to like making a bootleg, which I try to not use the word bootleg associated with what I'm doing anymore because I used to throw that word around because it was just kind of a buzzword to use, like mashup bootleg. But bootlegging really is making a, an, an unauthentic, inauthentic, unauthentic mm -hmm. um, copy of something that is not real. Like selling bootleg Nike merchandise on Canal Street in New York or in Houston on Harwin, like selling bootleg Gucci bags. That's you can get in trouble for that. Right. Um, as opposed to making unofficial, like a lot of my merchandise stuff is unofficial. It's not right. a bootleg. It's just. It's inspired it's, yeah, it's by like a lot of even, those things. Yeah. So even if you make a piece of merchandise with someone's face on it that didn't give you permission or maybe doesn't like it, they're actually benefiting from that. Some some parties are because you're there. It's like they're they're paying for marketing up front, but they didn't know that they needed that marketing. So um I think sometimes a lot of these artists that I work with, that I want, excuse me, these artists I do not work with in a professional <laughs> capacity, but make merchandise with their images or yeah. out of their images, um, I don't view it as bootlegging. So right. maybe that's how I sleep at night. Maybe they don't view it that way, but <laughs> I think it's, I think the marketplace, especially, sorry to go off on, go, go off on a tangent here. totally fine. But, um, no, I think this is super interesting. Um, yeah, like after having conversations with, some of these people, these decision makers at these big music companies. Yeah. Have they said something to you or been, <clears throat> I mean, mm, no, 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 yes and no. Yeah. But I think it's to their benefit. So now that I'm like working with them in some capacity professionally and doing, you know, I'm, I worked on the Alan Jackson rollout and that was like an official kind of like consulting gig that I had with them. Very cool. Um, they, I think they see a lot of value in like people that are elevating the status of anyone's brand that they're working that's under their umbrella. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, especially because it's a, I feel like you're injecting new life into something that is so classic, exactly. especially yeah. with like these classic country artists. Yep. And there's something that, I mean, it's the same thing all mm -hmm. the time. And some people like that, but I think you're adding a fresh spin to it and something that exactly. appeals to the masses mm -hmm. where someone who is an older generation can recognize, oh, hey, that's Shania Twain or that's yeah. Alan Jackson. But then you're able to spin it where it appeals to a younger demographic mm. who may not be familiar with it, but they recognize whatever it is that that inspiration comes from. Yeah. A prime example of that would be that Alan Jackson, if you're nasty shirt. Yeah. <laughs> because if you know Janet, Janet Jackson, Jackson, if you're nasty, like obviously that's really funny and clever. And I actually didn't come up with that. My friend, <laughs> my friend Elizabeth Cook said it one time. I mean, I made the shirt, obviously. Yeah. She said it one time. Um, we were setting up for a photo shoot in Nashville and she said, Something, something. Alan Jackson, if you're nasty. I was like, oh, cha -ching. Yeah. Yeah. And then we started to make that shirt. I probably should like throw us some bones for that idea. I think she's she's probably happy to just yeah. be mentioned yeah, and recognized. Because cool. you're big on that. And I, I <clears throat> one of the things I think is a testament to you and who you are, and that I've just noticed just from being your friend this time, is that you keep, you really have like on the come up with all these same people. Like mm -hmm. I know the Kenimer people. Yeah, yeah. Um, just the Molotov gallery, like you really keep it in the family in a mm. sense. And I feel like that's just from something that I've noticed on the outside mm. looking in is that you, you work with the same people, you know, you have photographers, but it's like you, you all are elevating at the same time yeah. and you're doing these different things. And I, I think that's great. It's like it's that a testament rising to you. tide lifts all boats kind of mentality a little bit. I mean, that's not entirely true, but it's entirely applicable, but yeah, I try to build, it took me a long time to figure out that you cannot do everything on your own. So building, you can't, you can try, okay. you can, you can note it. You, yeah. you can give <laughs> the trying. illusion and yeah. you can for a while you can coast on, on, but it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And you're going to hit a your head's going to start hitting a ceiling like pretty quickly. Yeah. 
So as long as you can, I think this is taking, this is like one of my life lessons, learning to trust people and like not even delegate because that feels like authoritative, but learning to build a team of people around you and like trust in people's talents and like recognize them and embrace them. Like, I think that's gotten the vinyl, like even right now, like there's so many people involved that like the average person who experiences vinyl ranch doesn't even know about um it's not like a one-man show there's so many people now mm -hmm. um that contribute even small contributions like the vinyl ranch thing like yeah my friend craig who makes a lot of the vinyl ranch memes now he um he was a dj in vinyl ranch like years ago he um is a journalist in houston he was kind of like a local celebrity for a while he had a tv show like on i think it was on it was called news fix i think it was on fox or one of those local stations but uh, like he he even contributes so much. He's so he's a he's, he's like a professional journalist. So he's doing all the interviews in the magazine. So tell people about what Vinyl Ranch is that are not familiar with that. Yeah, that's kind of like the new the new offering. It's a uh, it's not a print publication, but we're gonna do one print version per year. So we're basically gonna take each month, which features um, a, like a cover model and there's a music interview. So it's basically distilling like what the Playboy was down to like a very small easily digestible essentially taking out like 80 pages of ads right <laughs> so taking out all the marlboro man ads the winston ads and the jokes but uh yeah so mark and i molotov gallery and i kind of mm -hmm. collaborated on like riffing on like how could we do this ah. how could we create this you know i had the name for a while vinyl ranch yeah and i've been wanting to do something with it for a good time a good period of time but when the only fans thing popped up that's where it really like boom ah. so i saw all of my friends that were no longer able to play shows doing only fans i was like oh this is cool like power to the people like right these girls girls and guys um are sustaining themselves just putting pictures up and a lot of people default and i kind of did too i was guilty of it defaulted to like oh only fans is like pornography because that's the way it was characterized right the same way snapchat used to be like oh yeah snapchat like you know what your kids are doing you know what your kids are doing on snapchat <laughs> yeah um so it was kind of the same thing where i was like thinking okay only fans i've got all these friends in music who were using this platform to sustain their lives <clears throat> why don't i kind of step in and do something with that platform to kind of help promote my friends so long story long it's kind of another i don't say it's a gimmick but it's another platform for me to help promote music so ultimately that's kind of the way i do it but it's also got this like high fashion editorial photography element. Yeah. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, like yeah. I texted you, I was like, these girls that you're using, I mean, I'm sure there's even more that you already have in the pipeline, but just who you have, like you said, I think, I know like Playboy's always been a huge influence yeah. of yours and just seeing that. And that's what I think is so cool about you just in general overall is you have all these influences and you can see them all if, as you know, people get to know mm -hmm. you or people know where you've been and what you've done. I mean, you have those New York influences, mm -hmm. you have the Playboy influences, especially with Vinyl Ranch. I just, like you said, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Um, but I mean, the girls are all, they're just, and I, I love that you're not doing the conventional, traditional beauty. You know, they're very, these girls are very like voluptuous, they're women. Oh, yeah. And I, you know me, I like love that. I Same. love that they're, yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah. I mean, I love them all, right? Yes. We, we do. Right. I'm and I'm not, not discriminating. No, it's just course. like, but like for me, you know, as a, and I've told you mm -hmm. about this, like I've had body issues and mm -hmm. I've had different things and I've talked about it on this mm -hmm. podcast, but to see that it's very like, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool to see that. And it's done in a very tasteful, beautiful way. Um, and then, like you said, I think you're, you're going against something that is stigmatized mm -hmm. in a very Vinyl Ranch way, very, you know, David Wrangler disco cowboy way, which is really, really cool because that's not being done in that particular way. Yeah, I think I've always been very fond of like very curvy. I'm going to say full figure. I feel like there's so many <laughs> you things can you, can't, you can't say now. I'm like, right. what can I actually say without pissing someone off? But, um, well, like you said, just curvy, voluptuous. Yeah, like real people, like mm -hmm. not. There's nothing wrong with photoshopping. Like we all do it, right? No, everybody I've got has wrinkles. I face tune them out. Like whatever. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we're I, gonna face tune this whole episode. I'm just kidding. Please, I could, <laughs> I could use it. Trust me. I was part. I was partying in the um, the stable area behind Billy Bob's in Fort Worth two nights ago until five in the morning. There's a stable area. Yeah. So do you know what Billy Bob's is? It's yes. like the world's largest honky tonk mm -hmm. joint with the rodeo. Yeah. Stables. And I haven't seen the stable. Have you? Oh, he hasn't been to Dallas Fort Worth. Um. <clears throat> 
Yeah, the Fort Worth Stockyards. That's like a whole stockyards, yeah. whole vibe in itself. I, love I it. I've never actually. Oh, it's dope. <laughs> really? I, I never. You had, have to take. I want to see. It's cool. Like that side of yeah. it, I think it would be so cool. I, so I'm trying to get. I'm trying to spend more time in Dallas Fort Worth because I lived in Houston for so long, and in Houston, like you do not associate with anything da- related to Dallas. Like you just. Oh, that's how. Awesome. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're just not supposed. to. I agree with you. I used to live in Dallas. I lived in Dallas for oh. four years, and then moved to Austin. But then I've just been recently going back, and the music scene has always been really strong oh, totally. in Dallas. The mm-hmm. venues are amazing. Um, things that would sell out here in Austin, like I remember Fantagram had like three nights in mm-hmm. Austin, sold out right away not a sold out show in Dallas because there's so many other things to do. They have four sporting teams. They've yeah, got hockey, true. basketball, you know, football. So it's like everyone's really spread out and what they do, you know, the shows aren't as big of a priority mm. as they are here in Austin and music. But it's interesting that you say that because Dallas is, there's a lot there and it's huge. It's mm-hmm. massive. Yeah. It feels like Houston that way. But I think that rivalry goes back to, I think it has a lot to do with the Oilers Cowboys. The Oilers Cowboys <laughs> thing, but also just the way that Houston, I think Dallas, Dallas was like the oil business mm. and Houston was like oil manufacturing and all that sort of thing. So it was almost like a blue collar, white collar, huh. kind of like knuckle up. Interesting. Rivalry. Yeah. And I don't know that for sure, but just kind of my speculation on like knowing what historically what's happened in those two cities with, you know, the even watching the Urban Cowboy film, like it kind of gives you that insight. Like, oh, Houston's like so blue collar. It's not even that it's Houston. It, it was Pasadena. But yeah, all the all the manufacturing and processing and all that sort of thing goes on there. And I believe back in the day in the 80s, there was a lot more of the like business side. So it was, you know, like J.R. Ewing from Dallas. Yeah. Like, big cowboy hat. Yeah. Suit, all that sort of thing. <laughs> Houston, not so much. A little more. It's different now, but I miss Houston. Um, I lived there for on and off about 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, 15. But that was home-based because you that feel like you- was home-based wow. for a hot minute. But then over the past five years, I really started to leave and like get out of the nest for extended periods of time. And then I went back in 2017 to help open up this honky-tonk called Goodnight Charlie's that was only around, it burned, It was I think it was up for two years. And it burned white hot and then it was, it was, it was, it was gone, it closed. It was one of those COVID closures, oh. which is kind of a bummer because Houston didn't have like a live music, excuse me, didn't have a live country music scene that was like city center. Everything was like way out in the burbs. So you could go out to like, uh, there's a venue called do si and Conroe, I believe, not Conroe, somewhere out there. Like Conroe's far, yeah. That's, yeah, it was like out there. It's a hike. Yeah, or, uh, you know, some of these, all these spots were like way on the outskirts of town. So if you live downtown, like you couldn't go two-step anywhere, you couldn't go see a cool you couldn't there was no white horse in houston there still really isn't and there probably never will be um which is surprising with the rodeo being as big as it is there and as much exactly. of that influence as there is i mean when you think of vinyl ranch is i can see the houston it's super connection houston, yeah. because you have the hip-hop and the country yeah. connection mm-hmm. and it's so big there well the funny thing about the rodeo in houston is like people ben kenimer from the kenimer co said this to me the other day like walk into the, him and his wife Bonnie will walk through the grocery store and they're all like kitted out in their gear and they walk through the store and people will literally stop and ask why they're just like that. Like, you know, rodeo is in February, right? Really? Yeah. It's really crazy. It's become like washed out of the culture of Houston a little bit, Huh? almost to the, they've like swept it into the corner and the corner is the month of rodeo. <laughs> so that's when people wow. are prepared to see like cowboy hats and boots and stuff. And then everyone embraces it and yeah. kind of does it. But beyond that it's like nobody really it's also so hot in houston like if you're if you're like i have this this conversation with folks all the time like about the fashion and functional elements of dressing like this this is there's nothing functional about this hat. Like, <laughs> there's nothing functional there's a lot of sweat happening under this hat it's out of <laughs> season bright light. yeah if it's I hot would, yeah i mean this is jort jorts like right, right. La- yeah we <clears throat> like last time he was here with jonathan terrell and josh t pearson and you y'all have Josh on your show? That's not okay. yet. Whew. That's gonna be girl. I cannot wait. Oof. Mm-hmm. So love conquers all. Love conquers y'all. Love conquers y'all. Yeah. He is. He is a special one. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that. We had uh, when Jonathan Terrell was here. We talked about y'all's Jort Jort party. Um, that was and Steve was completely passed wild. out. I'm surprised Steve slept through that. Yeah. That was insane though. Like they literally. Well, I was watching them because you had. Right. So for those who aren't familiar. Um, David had this whole like wake and bake radio and he would play like DJ in the mornings 
And so I just remember like watching it and seeing you guys. I mean, that was, I enjoyed, I went back and watched it. And I think it's like one of your top viewed like Instagram lives because it was, it was such shareable. a vibe. You guys were just, I mean, <laughs> hanging out and, you know, Jonathan Terrell, I were talking about, he's like, oh yeah, your neighbors. Like he gave me the second part to that story yeah. that I didn't know about. Dude's and he's like, front. yeah, I remember. <laughs> I was like, wait, what happened? And he's like, oh yeah, we're out front and people were <laughs> very small shorts, three grown men with very small shorts on. Yeah. A lot of leg. We all have yeah. nice legs too. So it was like a lot of leg. <laughs> you do have your yeah. all like runners. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So I, like you said, we were talking about just like health on the road and doing all these different mm. things. And I bet that's tough. Cause just even now, and we, I feel like we connect a lot on this too, because it's like, we started all these things and we're always going, like every time we talk, it's like, I see you doing things. You're like, I see you doing things and we're going a million miles an hour. How are you balancing everything? Because- Not very well. <laughs> Cause you had, like you said, I, I'm the same way. I was in a mm -hmm. warehouse. I got really bad FOMO Friday night, ended up going out to see a, a friend that was a DJ that was in mm -hmm. town, but he went on at three. Ooh. And I had like no plans of even going out mm -hmm. there to see it and then, you know, this is the thing too about Steve's and our dynamic is that we kind of like enable each other. I was like, so where are you at? Like, what are you doing? He's Cause he was shooting a show yeah. that I was like, oh, I'm taking the night off. I'm just gonna chill. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna go and over here and do this. And I was like, oh, okay, well I might go out there. And he's like, do it. I'm like, done, <laughs> twist my arm, you know? But yeah, FOMO kicks in, but it's been hard just to have that 5 a.m. to have those 5 a.m. nights and then you're trying it's kind of impossible to then get up and do a 7.30, but I feel like you still do it. Like, I still do you're it. You're a big yeah. runner. Like, have you always been this marathon runner? Well, I played basketball. That's so, right. You remember? So there's a lot of running involved. Okay. So I just kind of have, <laughs> have, have maintained that. It's been very, very easy to maintain. But the running thing is great because I remember struggling to um, find places to, to uh, work out from city to city. It's like, oh, actually, I don't need to go. And I mean, you, you can go to gyms and whatnot anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was easier to like just get out on foot, like step out the door and take off. But I mean, you're running like it's not just like a mile. You're running like 10 miles at a time. Yeah. Eight miles. 10. You say that so casually. And it's so funny because when yeah. I was talking about you to one of my friends, they're like, oh, that's the that's the infamous like runner guy. He's like known in the like mm -hmm. running club <laughs> around Austin <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> for how you run. But that's just I, yeah, I just find that fast because you, you get out there and you do it. It doesn't matter hangover or not mm -hmm. actually that's my favorite some of my best runs where where i feel like not not to say i learned the most because that sounds a little hokey but you know when people are yogis and they have like personal revelations and all those kinds of things through their yoga practice running is kind of the same way interesting where I'll, I'll a lot of my best ideas actually come while i'm out running really but also some of my best runs are when i'm like severely hungover like partied out night night prior two nights prior um, those are some of my best runs, which is really odd because I meet people often. They're like, oh my God, I had like four beers last night. There's no way I could exercise today. And it's like, actually it's the best thing for you. Drink some water, sweat it out, push it, move it out of your body. It's the, the very best, the, it, for me personally, the best remedy for, you know, anything yeah. toxic I've done in my life, <laughs> generally, <laughs> which to your point about being healthy is like, I'm one of those binge personalities where I binge health and fitness and also binge self-destruction. So I'm like constantly like balancing. <laughs> it's like, like the angel and the yeah, devil on each shoulder. Yeah. And I'm generally happy. I don't want to say happiest, but I'm generally the most healthy when I'm not out. When I'm at, when right. I'm at home for 30 days, I can like right all the wrongs. I can cook every meal. I can micromanage everything I'm doing with, with my health. When I'm on the road, I'm like completely at the mercy of like who I've surrounded myself with. And I need yeah. to figure out how to be, how to turn that on its well, head. And that's hard. Cause they it feel like, especially too, when you are exercising and you're working out, you're like, oh, I'll just, you found like the remedy mm. for it in a sense as well. But again, I, yeah, I don't know. Case how. in point last night, I told myself I'm going to stop hanging with my friends at this time. I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to go running at this time. I assumed you ran this morning. I did not run this morning. Okay. I was, Snoozing, 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 <laughs> snoozing. I snoozed my entire runaway. And I didn't sleep. I'm like I woke up at seven. I went to bed at two thirty. Uh -huh. Um 
But yeah, here we go. But are. do you feel like some of that too is just kind of getting out of like I feel like there's this whole dynamic just essentially in the mm. world right now. People are just excited to be out. It yeah, doesn't matter like because we've talked sure. about that. I was talking about that with one of my friends yesterday, but just the fact that people are going out and seeing certain shows or seeing certain DJs that it like doesn't matter who it is at this moment in time because people are yeah. just getting especially here in Austin when you want to go out and see shows and people are just going out because they want to be out. Well, even the Barbarella thing tonight, like typically I'd be very hesitant to book anything on a Wednesday, a Monday through Wednesday. So I had a gig in Fort Worth two nights ago. Yeah. So that was for, you said Owen Fort Wilson? Worth. Yeah. Owen Wilson, Robert Duvall. I met Matthew so casually. his brother. I, mean, I didn't get to see those guys, but it was their film. I think it was called 12 Mighty Orphans. But um, I've never done any music events in Fort Worth, some in Dallas. So I was pretty eager to go and it was a cool party. It was super bougie bougie. <laughs> um, they put me up. You know, I stayed in a nice place, but I saw that my friends Mike and the Moon Pies from the Austin area were the headlining band. So I was very excited about that. Ended up, you know, it was one of those events where like nobody pays attention to you, which are, are generally the best paying <laughs> gigs. It's like, okay, gonna... Jonathan Terrell told me that. Like, oh, yeah. He, yeah. He played, I won't name the spot, but same thing, like a very bougie place. Oh, yeah. And he's like, no one paid attention to nobody me. Nobody cares. But it was, <laughs> they're so, they're so self absorbed. Which That's is so the, wild to me. I'm so, like, do you know is. who was playing? Do you know? Yeah. Like, I did see there was somebody who was like, I'm having a fangirl moment that I saw that um, I said that about you. But yeah, Jonathan Charles did the same thing. He's like, no one even like looked at me yeah. for two hours. For So for about like seven years, I most that was mostly what I did. So I DJed all like luxury fashion stuff in Houston mm -hmm. and Dallas as well. And um, yeah, generally like no one pays attention to you. That's how you know you're getting a good paycheck. <laughs> and you the paycheck's small when it's the best time generally that's which so is cool like you strip the money out of the thing and then it's like oh this is like the essence it's cool it's fun it's where you're supposed to be especially if you like being creative there's nothing creative about djing these some of these never mind i don't, <laughs> don't want to say that but um i got to hang with mike and the moon pies i was super excited about that and uh we ended up partying i didn't get to finish this earlier but they had parked their tour bus like kind of where the load in is for Billy Bob's, which is next to the stables, like the rodeo. So it stunk really bad. And like, I kept asking like, man, it smells like shit out here. Like, what's going on? It's <laughs> like, yeah, literally like there's an animal shitting over here. Like this is where the animal pens are. Um, but yeah, we ended up hanging out in the parking lot until five in the morning. It was bad. parking lot pimping, parking lot pimping. Um, it was wild. What was it going? Yeah. Barnyard. But that's Somewhere, still, yeah. but even getting back to, I mean, there's, there's a part of you too. I mean, you're out till 5 a.m. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, what's the trade off there? You get to connect and see your friends again. That was the thing. I felt no remorse. Great. I was super happy I got to, because I've been up in Tulsa. I have almost no friends up there. So it's very. Aww. Tulsa's almost. a vibe, but I feel like it's you cool. made it a vibe, it, like up there. Mm, I made my vibe. Okay. <laughs> I brought my vibe up to Tulsa, but Tulsa yeah. actually is way cool and I dig it. Um, I don't know how long I'll it's stay Pino there. Rita's. You have any more of those? I've not had a pina rita. Pina rita is a Since. pina colada margarita. <laughs> yeah, hybrid. Nashua. A hybrid, yeah. yeah. Um, Tulsa's been cool. I've been trying to keep out of town only because all my people are down here. Mm -hmm. So it's tricky to stay someplace. It's like walking into, not walking into a jail cell at all, but it's like. I mean, you're walking into a basketball gym. <laughs> yeah. Just like, what's the point of isolating myself from all of my people like anymore, you know, now mm -hmm. that things are opening back up? So I'm excited to move, and now I'm going all over the place. But yeah, I moved to Tulsa last year, right before I met you, shortly. Yeah, before, the Tulsa months. remote, because you were looking yeah. at moving here. And that's what was yeah, so wild is because I feel like you said the universe just kind of shifted you and you went to Tulsa. Redirected me. <laughs> Re literally redirected yeah. you. But that was also a time where I, you know, just seeing you <clears throat> and seeing what you were doing, like you're... It gave you the space to to sit there and be present with your brand mm -hmm. and everything that you were doing and oh, starting sure. to create music. And then, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to give you some major props because I know we talk about this, but I'm going to I want other people to know the community that you built. Mm, you thanks. know, you had a time. Mm -hmm. So he was doing this thing called Wake and Bake Radio. So every morning. I mean, in a time where people were either in quarantine, they're mm -hmm. working from home, they didn't have any type of outlet or community. And you were the first person I saw to really just commit mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. DJing every day and being on there and taking requests. And I know you were in your zone, like, and that was the thing too. I mean, <laughs> you'd be like in either like a silk robe or maybe some outfit or 
some kind of you, something, yeah. <laughs> something you that was still signature to you, but just seeing the comments in the community. I mean, mm. I'd see the same people and I'm sure you can even name like off. I could whole... tell you all their screen names could not tell you their government names. <laughs> <laughs> But those some people have been were blocked. Some have blocked me because, like, it's been a really. It's been a general, had, yeah, what's oh, a crazy? Yeah. It's been a I'm general sure. hospital episode. Really, for sure. Like more Melrose Place than General Hospital. <laughs> Why? Just people like in the comments or like just pe- wanting. That's another thing too. Is I feel like people have gotten a little cray cray in yeah. quarantine. So I'm sure you had to experience some of that because you are putting yourself That's on this thing. public platform yeah. every people, day, and people, people feel have like a. They really know you. Yes. It's like you know a an aspect of me. You don't know the most the most personal things in my life do not end up on social media. Like absolutely not. Family, people I'm dating, anything that's like super personal does yeah. not go on my social media. Which is smart. Just as what's a, the choice as for? Product. Yeah, why why do you choose to keep that? Because private. I think that is for me and not for everyone else. And also there are a lot of crazy people out there when you make yourself even not, I'm not trying to say I'm one of those like public, what do you, what do you call them? What are the people? Public figure. Public figure. Yeah. Yeah. But you are, you're you're a public figure. Sure. Sure. We all, all, all I'll name you a public Um, figure. But people develop a connection with a part of you and they think that they know you and that they, you, they, you belong to them to some degree. Mm -hmm. So even with the wake and bake thing every morning, when I started that, I had no idea what it was going to become. I just knew that I was stuck at home. All these other people are stuck at home. <laughs> um, and it was an easy kind of flex to like, oh, I can like practice. I can just continue playing music. Um, it was fun and different and new. I'd never done anything live streaming before. And I wasn't really DJing. I was more just kind of yeah. playing music and giving people an outlet to like have a good time. And, but also at that same, on the same token, like nobody was doing anything in the morning. Everybody exactly. Was, everybody was trying to do a live streaming event at night. You know, mm-hmm. it's like all these people are working from home. They want something to do. And I wanted something to do at the same time. So it was almost, it was like equally charitable and like very selfish at the same time. It was kind of hitting <laughs> both, both sides of the coin. Right. But I super loved it. And now it feels like so long ago now. Yeah. I done it. Cause you did. I, I kind of laid yeah. it to bed at the end of the year and just like didn't tell anyone. You did. Like you did Irish that very. Goodbye. I was literally thinking about that yesterday. It's I was Irish like, goodbye. He, someone else likes to do those. <laughs> that's my. That's my. Sig, really? That's See, my sig move. I feel so guilty doing that. So we did that at the party. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and I knew he was gonna do that. So I literally like is like, hey, if you leave, like, get, let me know. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna do it in like ten minutes. <laughs> and I was like, but I felt so guilty. I'm like, mm, can't say bye. Just leave. Just walk out. Oh, I felt so. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to say bye to anyone. Well now, see I now I know it. both of you. Yeah. If I if you're missing, I, I know you're gone. Yeah, not my style, but I respect it because I feel like there's probably more, especially with you. You know, all the people you have to say bye to, and all the people you have to see. Yeah. But yeah, you did that in this community that you built. I mean, it just probably even fueled even more so like your brain. I know that's when I got really engaged, and you even did like this again. You were one of the first people to do this Zoom party. Oh, with yeah, you had your own fun. custom background. So, yeah. I mean, you've always just been this trailblazer, which is why, like I said, I've always admired you and been inspired mm-hmm. by everything that you do because it is, when you are going on your own path, which I feel like I've really done as well. Yeah, you definitely have. It's <clears> been <throat> interesting. And that's why it's it's like you you find comfort in seeing other people do it too mm-hmm. and make it work, especially, you know, and I've come to you for like business advice yeah, yeah. and for help with that. But I think you're just, and I know you said you're like mentoring people and I just, I don't know how you find the time. <laughs> I think we're all, all if you're doing, to your point, if we're doing, if you're trailblazing in any capacity, in any lane, you're indirectly or unofficially indirectly mentoring all kinds of people that are watching Mm. you. So not that you have an obligation to do that, but I feel like to some degree you do have an obligation if you're somebody who's taken a chance and taken risks. But I generally always try and align myself with people that can lift me up while, you know, it's good to pay it forward. Right. But I'm always looking for, like, even the other day on my Instagram, I was like, is there somebody here who can be my mentor in some capacity? Like, even if it's, there's always something new to learn. It's like, you know, at one point I want to get into real estate. So I'm like, is, I have so many friends. Really? That, I mean, just. You yeah, know, just in, in general. Just in general, like, always trying to figure out, like, what what can I learn that I don't know anything about? Like, Interesting. What, because it opens up. You always find a way to connect it back to your thing, whatever the thing is. That I mean, you have a thing, I have a thing. Right. Everyone does. So figuring out ways to kind of like enhance or support whatever you're already doing. It could be anything like, for instance, a real estate 
project. Oh, I'm getting, do. yeah, I get asked. I, you know, I hang out with all the 12 Rivers oh, yeah, crew. Totally. Shout out 12 Rivers 12 Realty. Rivers, I love Realty. them. Mm -hmm. They're, I mean, they're my homies, they're my friends, and they're like, just say the word Clarissa whenever you're ready. But I'm like, I don't even have time to do like what I'm doing. <laughs> but how do you, I'm, I am curious just, as we're talking about this, because I think something that I struggle with is like when to put a boundary down, when to say no. Mm. So especially with you and as spread as you are doing all these things, when do you kind of put that boundary down? And when you say, okay, no, I, I can't help you here. I can help you here. Like, how do you kind of make those, you know, cause I'm sure there's other people out there that mm -hmm. struggle with that. I know I struggle with that. So I'd love to hear your advice on how you kind of navigate those waters. I've always been, I don't want to say have been a yes man, but it's easy to, it's, I don't ever want to have the feeling of an opportunity that I, that was presented and I said no. So I used to kind of err to that side. It was like, oh, people want to work with me or want me to, want to include me in something. Mm -hmm. So I will always say yes and I'll figure, I'll just make it work. Mm -hmm. um, so now things have changed substantially. So my time is like the wealth, like even yeah. everything I'm doing is like, the wealth in, in, in everyone's life is their is their time is exactly their time. so now figuring out like okay like what is actually a priority i'm not very good at that honestly it's hmm. just i'm always kind of rotating everything's on this like kind of lazy susan and it's kind of moving around and i'm like just figuring out on this carousel like how i i wish i had a good answer for that question because i struggle with that too i think anyone who's bootstrapping a project or a brand or a anything mm -hmm. um deals with time management and like seeing value seeing the immediate value in like a thing and a commitment or a project so i don't i don't know how to answer that i'm not good at it <laughs> I, <laughs> but say, I feel like you I are yes. it's probably from your intuition though and i think you're probably doing totally. it because you yeah. have all this experience and that's one of the things like when you talk to david the more you get to know him the more he has these random stories about like just oh yeah like uh, I'm going to share one of the ones that I loved. So when I first met you and I saw, I was looking at your Instagram, obviously I'm a Spurs fan because I'm from San Antonio oh, yeah. and you were wearing, I mean, it's literally, I would have made it like my screensaver. Like I love <laughs> this photo of you, so but you're funny. wearing this cowboy hat and you have the disc. I mean, it's like, I mean, yeah, you really should. Like I would buy that photo and put it on the wall. I need to have that illustrated for like a piece it's of merch. It's so good. Whenever someone and he's wearing this merch. like Spurs <laughs> track suit. The track suit. Which is like an official tracksuit. Oh, yeah. It's a tearaway. A tear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Roll when I eyes. asked you about, I was like, tell me about like that photo. You, you're you like, oh, yeah, by the way, I used to do and finish that story. Because it was just such a bizarre thing that you did. But it just kind of goes on top of your story and like and contributes to who you are today. But right. You said you had that in like some kind of you were I'm trying to think where they would sell clothes by the pound. You're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's called the industry term for this place. It's called a rag house. And I feel so, I feel like I shouldn't say that. I feel like it's got some negative dark connotation. The you rag house? The rag house. I mean, if you got that Spurs tear away there, I don't think. <clears throat> yeah. It's well, just, I think what it, what the place is, it's like, so when you buy vintage clothes, like the vintage clothing empires that operate in the U S they have these warehouse, they're called rag houses in the industry. And it's basically they ship, it's where you buy, they send clothing by the pallet. So you'll have like these huge pallets with like thousands of pounds of denim and thousands of pounds of t-shirts. And they're in these massive hot warehouses and you have like 50 people in their sorting clothes. And they look like little mini sand dunes of clothing, like heaps of t-shirts. And so, you, so they go through these grading processes and like filtering between all these people. So the rag house had, in Houston, I was going to buy clothing by the pound. Um, so I was going to buy like all those like disco polyester shirts. And I had some vintage clothing event. And I was going to kind of source for that. But then they had a side room where it was like the filtered out all the good, all, you know, all the good, good. The good, good. The good, good. So we went in that room and uh, yeah, but that's where I found the Spurs tracksuit. It's dope. So it was by the pound. And, and it, it fits you weigh, perfect. It doesn't yeah. weigh anything. Like it's a tearaway. <laughs> so I probably, I think I probably paid like $10 for it. And then I bought this like really shitty rug that my bill, my bill was really high. I was like, what? It's like, oh, I bought this rug. The rug weighed, I don't know how many pounds, 20 pounds. So I ended up, you know, if I did the math, I ended up probably paying a lot more for that. Wow. Track suit. But that's just so funny about the rag house thing um, is that, or the idea of purchasing clothing by the pound. It's like you have this, you could have this old Rolling Stones t-shirt that's paper thin that weighs three, three and a half ounces. That's worth 
four hundred dollars on a secondary market, and then you have this like dumb rug. <laughs> it weighs 12 pounds and you just agreed you signed off i'm like i'm gonna take all this stuff i'm gonna pay you a flat rate per pound well, I'm into those, though. In, uh, in New York. oh yeah like, yeah like just an empty warehouse and like like you can climb you can literally climb piles of climb up piles of clothing yeah. but all that but like you have this whole like fashion background as well you sort of yeah sorta. you say sort of yeah um well i worked for this dude for a couple of years, I mean, I've always been into clothing and fashion mm-hmm. and all that sort of and thing. And style. Yeah. So when I was a little kid, I have a, a few pictures of me, like when I'm three and four years old. I think I've maybe sent one to you in the past. And it's me. I've got my, I've got this little, like, cheap, like, faux leather jacket. I'm like four years old. I, my mom insisted, my mom told me that I would never let anyone, I would cut my own hair and dress myself, like, from a very young age. I was like very, very independent, very independent. Like just, I was, she said I was born as an adult. Like I was in a little adult. So I would dress myself, but there's this really funny Polaroid of me with like my sleeves rolled up. I'm wearing a Michael Jackson raglan, like baseball shirt, this thriller, like all the checking all the boxes, weird Euro trash, like jagged bangs, <laughs> like mullet, kind of mullety looking haircut. And, um, it's so, so funny because like 35 plus years later, I still dress it. Like just, I'm still the same person, <laughs> which is funny to talk about like nature and nurture because I feel like people are just born with like a. Is this it? A, yes. Oh yeah. Right there. Yeah. This is the photo. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is my favorite photo of you. Oh man. I'm so thin right there. That's funny. That one's so good. It's so good. That's like you literally, I mean, you even I've have like. The vinyl's popping out. You've got the disco. I mean, yeah, I missed that apartment in Houston. That was fun. Yeah, it's my favorite. This was the photo. I was like, who is this person? Like, this, this is rando, dude. Amazing. Yeah, Fifty-seven weeks. Perfect. Ago. Orange cowboy hat. It's the only time I've ever worn that. Probably the only time I ever. <laughs> I probably couldn't fit into that right now. Really? No, I'm like a sausage oh. bursting out of the casing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about something that I know you just announced this and I appreciate you waiting to come on here so we could talk about it is ACL. Oh yeah. You've got these like huge announcements and so now mm-hmm. things are opening up. What are you most excited for? And I know that's obviously one of them. I mean, you're opening up for mm-hmm. the King, George the Strait. King. The Kang. Yeah. The Kang. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I think, well, I was really, I'm very excited about it. And don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's kind of like this delayed gratification thing because I was, booked for that in 2019 really yeah so i was supposed to play last year and then things just you know everything pushed bonnaroo which bonnaroo actually at this point hasn't formally been announced but i'm on bonnaroo too um exciting yeah i think the next announce their next wave of artist announcements i'm on that one Mm -hmm. but uh yeah it's kind of surreal that's the best that's that's all i can say about it acl you look at those lineups every year and even the names that are small in small print like look at go back and look at all the posters like every one of those names like you know how many people want to have their name even on like yeah type one like the the, the very bottom line is like that's so dope like yeah if if i retire after djing this year which i've considered <laughs> really yeah, totally. oh don't break some heart you're gonna break some hearts right nah, now i think from my, i won't retire from djing but i don't i only want to do stuff like that i think like acl caliber like i'll do that so you can work on it it's kind of like more bang for the buck more mm-hmm. quality over quantity yeah which is the qu- the quality of the quantity i'm doing now is like cool and i'm into it but i've been doing this for a while and i'm like old and tired so <laughs> i just also like you give so much your time to something you yeah. want to give it to something else like there's yeah. so much out there to experience and like learn and be good at that well especially with it being removed for so long with having a whole yeah, year of no events i feel mm. like that's kind of centralized you know put everybody back to middle and back to yeah. center of like okay what is my new normal what's reality now that's this is a funny conversation i have with people too because while i'm very excited about playing a major music festival it also is like scares the shit out of me and now it's, because also now i know i have a lot of work to do and even every day that goes by, I'm like, shit, like today I could have put two hours into my ACL set, which is only 40 minutes, but it's got to be like this really compelling kind of thing, which I guess it doesn't have to be, but I want it to be. And that's the problem with the pressure that you apply to yourself versus mm-hmm. the perceived pressure of other people looking at what you're doing and like wanting to, I don't know, I'm one of those people that always um, projects <laughs> 
not projects failure and anxiety, but I always assume like I'm ne- I will never accept the compliment for anything. I from know anyone. I know from you my don't. My mother from like nobody. Why is that? I have no idea. I just, you really I'm, don't. Like no, you're I always do, you're not. the most humble person that I know, it's and it's not, like humble is like humble is like. But you, yeah, you don't accept that. You're like oh, I'm just yeah. You immediately like, counter it with like I, no, I could no <laughs> tr- tr- Trust me, like you're doing get, the most, but yet you're like, no, no, I'm not. But you can always, you can always do better. And I think that's when you, when you feel like you left something on the, you left something on or off the table. What's, what's the best way to say that? On the table or off the, or you didn't bring something to the table. You had more to give and you didn't give it or you couldn't give it. I think like I'm always operating under that. That thumb is like always down on me, like all the time. It has nothing to do with my parents. It has nothing to do with, it's just, I've always been that way and i think that's kind of what motivates certain personality types to like push 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 yeah if you feel like if you're comfortable which is why i always keep myself slightly out of a comfort zone um if you if you're comfortable then you don't push as much so i always i think by nature like always keep myself slightly out of comfort you know that's why running is so great because it's like very painful um (laughs) and it's humbling but it, it also gives you a sense of accomplishment and you know mm-hmm. that the next time you do it, it's going to be, you're starting over almost, but the comfort zone thing, I always keep myself out of the comfort zone. I think that's kind of, I'm probably repeating myself now, but if you can, my advice to anybody who lives in a comfort zone is like, you are, if you're comfortable, you've already maxed out. You, you have not maxed out in that sense, but you have, you're not giving anymore because you're comfortable. So right. get out of that space and like, now you've got a new frontier ahead of you because yeah. you've got to push, you've got to fight, you got another horizon to move towards. But I really, I to piggyback on what you said, I really mm-hmm. do think that's a personality type. For sure. Because I feel like, you know, I understand that because that's how I feel. Yep. And I know that's it's how like Steve, a type a thing. we all are like always striving mm-hmm. for something more. And we always, always I yeah. And it, it's interesting too, because like I've dated mm-hmm. people that are just, cool with doing the nine to five you know we've talked about this like doing the nine to five and doing you know going out and that's and that's life for them and like for me i'm like what what's more than Mm. that like what else can you be doing and i want to give you props i know because you're not gonna say this and you're not gonna accept the compliment but just (laughs) everything that you've done i mean from vinyl ranch to djing i mean you've toured there's a whole rap sheet of things that you've done you know toured with midland you're all these different things, and you technically didn't get to tour with Midland. Well, you were, but oh yeah. I was, I was going, you know, there's but lots you've, of but yeah, you've yeah, met sure. all these people. Oh, yeah, I mean, so. you've been in all these different circles. You started a very successful, you know, brand in itself, but you're, I feel like if you were complacent and mm-hmm. if you were mm-hmm. like, okay, this is good, I'm, I'm done, then it wouldn't be as good as it is. And you wouldn't have these other spinoffs. You wouldn't have, and what's great too, I think, like you said, if you do eventually retire, mm-hmm. You have these other things that you can yeah, go to I mean, and that you can still be stimulated with. And I'm sure you'll find something else to f- occupy your time that yeah. fits the life that you want. And I think that's very special and unique to you because a lot of people don't have that luxury or they're just yeah. trying to find a job or trying to find things. And like you have found a way to do it in, a, in your way. That's not common for a lot of people. It's not common. And even like reaching, even having a conversation with the people closest to you, like your family members and watching people with like these incredible talents and seeing them over decades suppress their talents to just kind of be comfortable all the time by like, it's a generational thing too. And like, I totally understand that. So no slight to those people who like don't, aren't self, I'm going to say self-motivated, but um, they're successful and they do a good job. But they don't see the immediate kind of, uh, what's the best way to say that? Like watching, watching, for instance, your parents, like born, you know, out of post-depression, watching them kind of just buckle under the idea of like, oh, I need to go and work for someone else. I need to do all these things. So the immigrant dream versus, you know, immigrants come to the U.S. and they don't do that. They start their they start their own businesses. They do all these things. My friend Alejandro used to talk often about the American dream is like not for if you're a third generation American, there's no American dream for you. The American dream is like the American dream is coming to the U.S. and like ah, living out your dream. Right. It's not true. for like you've been here, you're lazy and middle class white folks who live in the suburbs like mm-hmm. that doesn't apply to them. Um, but 
being able to create your own identity and live out whatever your passions are and kind of monetize them and build a business and a brand and a life around that, I think is like super valuable. And I wish that more people would kind of like put themselves out on a limb and like do that. Cause yeah. I have a lot of people around me right now that have like incredible talents and all the tools and resources around them and like lots of people too. And just, just choose to take the path of least resistance. And you can see that, you know, there's some unhappiness and money, obviously money is in everything. Like for me, like the real wealth is like having time and like freedom and space to move around in. And the worst for me personally, like in hindsight um, also is the worst feeling is like being a caged bird. And like I want to fly, you want to fly, a bird wants to fly and flap mm-hmm. its wings. So if you're confined to this little cage, that this prison you build your, for yourself, you wall yourself into, um, I would just always, I've always avoided that even yeah. since I was like, a, just from out of the gate, like when I was a kid, like never wanted to, people to tell me what to do, be told what to do, be told where to be. So yeah, in essence, I'm just, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a train wreck at times, it's like everything <laughs> I'm doing, but it's all like moving together. It really is. Seemingly. Yeah. But like Sometime. physically and metaphorically, yeah, like yeah, totally. I feel like because you've done, like you said, the whole cage bird, like you need to be mm-hmm. out and traveling and doing these different things. But then, like you said, it's knowing too, like mentally, you don't want to feel constricted. And that's where, like you said, I feel like you're your best just from knowing you when you have that space and you have that freedom to do and you've right. created it. That's the thing. Like it's one thing. And like one of my favorite quotes is there's dreamers and there's doers and there's dreamers that do. The dreamers that do. Yeah. And like so, you're yeah. one of those. Yeah. So I think that's very unique and special to you. Thanks. I'll take, I'll take that compliment. You'll take that compliment. The only one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what else is kind of coming up for you? I know you got ACL, yeah. Bonnaroo. So the next, like kind of in to your point, which you were just talking about, like the moving around. So uh, starting new projects and whatnot. Yeah. So I've got finally, I've wanted to, Vinyl Ranch was always supposed to kind of be a record label. So I've finally employed some people. Like I have no business actually doing anything administrative. But as far as like the A and R and like helping friends out and all that sort of thing, so yeah, Vinyl Ranch. My first release with Vinyl Ranch is my friend Garrett T. Caps out of San Antonio. You need to have him on the show. He's inc- you know, yeah. Don't listen to me. No, but I'm listening to you. He's, he's I'll great. listen to you. So yeah. there's always other people that are like, hey, you should have this person on your I know, podcast. I feel like that's so cliche. To say. <laughs> you know, you should. No, have it happens all the time. But I, but you, there's certain people that I 100 percent would listen to, yeah. and like you're one of them. Like I trust your musical ear and judgment yeah. but there's some people that like joe schmo like i was literally talking to like my uber driver and no knock to my uber driver but he was like oh you should have this person on your show mm-hmm. this part you know and it's just like you don't know anything about my show right. <laughs> you know yeah. anything but i get that all the time but no t- continue about this person yeah garrett garrett t caps San garrett t garrett t caps uh, c-a-p-p-s yeah uh-huh um yeah he's got a new record coming out called um, I love San Antonio. It's beautiful. It's like Valley Valley. You you guys got to come on and you need to eat like bean and cheese tacos together. And, like, oh my talk gosh! About, like, San Antonio shit. He's hilarious. Oh, I love He's that a character. His music's incredible. It's like this really high energy, um, like ZZ Top meets. It's like Tex Mex, like Tejano country. It's really. Cool. Oh, I love that. He like perfectly captures like that San Antonio, like bean and cheese barbacoa. Red, you're, I mean, you're speaking big, my language red, right now. Big red, low spurs kind of vibe. Yeah, fiesta. <laughs> What's, do you know about that, Steve? No, <laughs> about to learn you. Wait, but no, I mean, you're speaking my. Li- that's literally no, what I, know, I would yeah. eat every Sunday morning after church. My parents would go pick Barbara up a big pound my of barbecue bar- in the foil. Yes, a little foil <laughs> like, brick. A, it's like, a like brick two pounds. Coke. Yeah, it's like a little brick. <laughs> literally, you'd walk out with this brick of coke, greasy, <laughs> at like yeah. AF. But that was like when you knew it was good. A big pack of tortillas. Yes, <laughs> literally, like and a salsa just- in a white container. <laughs> 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 I want that now. It was so good. And there was, yeah, we, no, we even, we didn't put cilantro down. on there. Oh, yeah. It would just be like straight mm-hmm. barbacoa, mm-hmm. which is cow tongue, by the way. No, it's, oh. the, it's the face. The face meat. It's the face? Yeah. The I tongue, the lingua tongue. is the. The lingua. Yeah. But freaking delicious. Yeah. You're speaking. We'll tell him that I would love to have him on and we yeah. can, and we're doing that. Send it. Bring it some bean and down the line. Come yeah. Come. Um, well, let's get, let's maybe like make that connection when his record's coming out. So I think it's going to, probably be august so he's releasing so you said vinyl ranch now yeah yeah oh so great so i have a new management in new york um this guy's name is michael fall his agency is called sub rosa curation and they mostly work with like indie rock 
like hot buzzy indie rock bands like cool kid indie rock like haircuts and black <laughs> kids that cut their own hair yeah kids that cut their own hair that are, that, <laughs> yeah that are not even kids like a four, a four year old like cutting yeah. his hand cutting his hair with left-handed scissors in his right hand like that's what I, that's what my haircut looked i like. want to know yeah i look I'm like curious. Lord christmas from dumb and dumber <laughs> you know where, where the window comes down the limo actually it's, it's, it's what my hair looked like but it was kind of like billy ray cyrus in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now it really does no i'd love to yeah how were you as a kid i'm, I'm just curious randomly uh, probably exactly the same really yeah <laughs> <laughs> quiet scheming you know, <laughs> off on his own i don't know yeah, I don't, I don't really remember. Okay, so back but to back records, to Garrett. Yeah, so Garrett has a record that's releasing. Yeah, Garrett's the first record. Not to make this about Garrett, but yeah, the but Vinyl yeah, Ranch records, but it's Vinyl Ranch Vinyl. Records. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, which probably will just be called Vinyl Ranch, I think. Okay. So um, yeah, just putting out records, so friends' records now. But I'm mostly aiming to do like really oddball stuff that people won't touch. So I've been communicating with you know some artists in different countries that do like really kind of interesting. Um, like fusion like this this dude just reached out to me from uh like trinidad who's do, he's doing country music in trinidad so just trying to do trying to bring something fresh and spicy you know to the country music palette that like hasn't been done already Amazing. but also at the same time doing like straight up the middle like country stuff like garrett's project is perfect but i'm also pairing that with like this other um artist from austin who sounds like it's like a Fleetwood Mac, like dreams kind of single with a remix from like a dance producer. So we're kind of, it's like the Vinyl Ranch Instagram. Yeah. Like we're touching all targets and be some hip hop stuff. Um, so, so can people stuff. submit to, to be part like right. submissions or are you Soon. kind of just, you're curating and I'm you're picking the, out who you want. Yeah. I'm working on the first year of it right now. And then moving into like doing, you know, boutique vinyl mm -hmm. pressings and it's, it's going to be, cool. you know, it's going to come. People are going to be like, Oh, here's my record. No, it's already, it's already, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of what motivated me actually to do this because over the past year that was happening so frequently mm -hmm. and people didn't have an outlet for releasing their music that, you know, so many people, this is kind of like the pro and con of, um, technology and like the ease that you can like distribute something via, you know, Spotify, the streaming platforms mm -hmm. <clears throat> is that everyone ends up doing that. And then it's like, how, well, how do you cut through? And that's kind of like where I'm trying to figure out like, okay, my offering here really is like helping you with distribution, like getting your project in front of people because anyone can start a record label anywhere, but they have no distribute, they have no platform to market and distribute right. whatever that content is. And I've already built a little, you know, machine, yeah, machine. that can distribute all of that. So I think the value that I, that I'm bringing is like more, in that regard to more of like the marketing distribution creative merchandise all that sort of thing but you also have the ear for it like yeah, you said totally. you know that you not only the ear but the eye mm -hmm. so you can see both like you yeah. said you already knew with this guy you're like yes this is it so this is where i think like your gut you've already cultivated this whole thing within yourself to be able to make those this you know more so than anything maybe oh, you're sure. not having like a checklist you're not sitting there by the book but you've just done it for so long it's a visualized manifest thing too also so once you trust and you you're you've kind of you're sharper and you know what's good like what's good for you not mm -hmm. what's good objectively but what's good for your brand or your project or what you can contribute to and you know push down the line but like i'm working with jt on one of his singles also oh. which i'm super excited about and i'm really excited for people to hear the song because it's really oh. so good he played his song um westward which, here that is not on the album mm -hmm. that he was, it was like the title song. And he's like, this song didn't even didn't, make oh, song shit. didn't even make it on the album. Crazy. And you played it here. And I was like, cry. It was a moment. I mean, it's yeah. very special to have, I mean, he's just a special human being, both of y'all, your, your friendship is, and you can see that um, something that just real fun note about Jonathan. He told me about the first time y'all DJ together. <laughs> and how you didn't necessarily know that he wasn't as skilled in his DJ. No, yeah. He, he said that. He, he was like, he was it. like, you should have seen David's face. Like he was freaking out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I knew that he was not ready or that I he's like, okay, you, you got this. Because I, this is the thing too about like you hold a cow, even though it's like an unspoken bar, like bar, like right. standard that you want to maintain and hold. And even then he was like, oh man, you know, when it comes to DJing, like that's your, that's your world. And so he was like, yeah, I, 
who's not happy with. No, he did. He, he, <laughs> he said he did, he did a great. great job. Yeah, yeah that's what he yeah. said. He's like, I actually did great. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so you guys are playing tonight at Barbarella. Oh, yeah, tonight at Barb's, kicking it off. Yeah, we're doing this like cowboy disco. Yeah. Party. So what? What? What is that? What's a cowboy disco? Uh, it's. Just Do we two know cowboys, what? <laughs> two cowboys playing dance music. It, it, I mean, that's. There's. No I've been to Barbarella's one time you since have, I've lived in Austin. I've actually been once, and it was I think well twice now. Um, and the first time was, I think, like 10 years ago. Really? That was the only time until I went a week or two weeks ago to test the sound system. <gasps> I'd actually never been in there. So it was cool. It's a dope spot. I'm like very excited. About I'm very it. excited to watch I'm excited all. for the potential of what this could become because I'm moving to Austin soon, which I know I say that. I'm being <laughs> No, but I think you're actually doing it. You're, you're going to do it. I'm doing it. No, I'm, I'm, and I'm very excited to do it. It's not that I feel like that I have to do it. But I've been trying to move here for a hot ass minute. But so. this is the uh, this is this is your moment. This is your time. I you've think got, so. You've got your business here. Yeah, you've yeah. got everything here. Exactly. You've got your network. It feels like every the stars are finally aligning. Like, yes, probably. exactly. So, yeah. so I'm excited. You're gonna lift up this whole city. So you better come here. You better move here. He's moving here. Mm-hmm. You're gonna commit that. But but that's what you're doing. And I think it's it's interesting. Like you said, we get to let artists be artists. Yeah, and creatives and missing. you get to be the person that lifts them up and creates this machine so happy to support you in any way Thank i can you. and we'll continue to just support everyone support austin yeah, support totally. i mean but you're even bigger than austin you're bigger i mean you've been all over the place i know see here we go again <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's 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 your but you have but you valid, have the, but again you have the platform to continue and that's what the platform's for and that's mm-hmm. how i see my platform i look sure. at it as my platform is not about me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have, yes, I have it, but it's in essence to promote other people, people mm-hmm. I believe in, people that, that's one thing I think that people have told us and people tell me now that we're like out in the wild again is people are like, oh, whoever you have on, like I actually pay attention to who yeah, they are. And I've built up that relationship mm-hmm. and that trust just like you that's have with, yeah. with you that when you bring an artist and you're showing people like, hey, you guys should pay attention to this mm-hmm. person, they are because you've built up that trust and that following. And it's like, there's those people that try to do it overnight or they're I'm sure they're asking you like, mm-hmm. I want to get where you are and do what you're doing, but like you're doing it and you've built up that reputation for that. Yeah, that's kind of the bummer right now too about putting, you know, feeling the pressure to show and share what your secret sauce is to people mm. all the time because they're like, oh yeah, the Big Mac, it's Thousand Island dressing. That's a secret sauce. Like everyone knows it's no secret. So you can go and you can copy someone's secret sauce so easily, but that's just, you're just copying something. There are roots under the ground that like go in like 50 directions that are pretty deep that you can't copy that. So a lot of people don't see that. Uh, which which I think is cool. So whenever I see a copycat thing come up, I'm like, yeah. ah, all right, like, okay, good for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. you got popular copy, you know, doing yeah. something quickly, like, mm-hmm. good for you, or, you know, good. That's great. Cool. Like, I don't, I don't have time to like monitor any of that shit anymore. You don't, yeah. But what do you? What's that? What's that? J, what's the JFK quote? Um, the do for your country. Don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like I've kind of low-key adopted that like ooh, i like that but with country music it's like what you know you that's a shirt you that's with, a shirt i know i've been trying to Better get write that one for, down. for a hot minute <laughs> no the guy that did the straightful dead shirt like i hit him up about doing it's like hey i have this jfk idea like, yeah. from the speech like can we can we do that on a shirt but like ask not what country music can do for you for you but what you can do for country music yes so it's kind of the same thing so watching oh, all these people that. like make money from country music but like what are you actually doing are you paying musicians rent every month are you helping advance someone's career are you doing all these things and like that's kind of like i can sleep at night i love that i can sleep at night knowing like i'm actually helping so many people out and i'm helping myself you know it's reciprocal of course but you know there's there's you can make money doing anything, right? Like you can mm-hmm. hustle, you can make money, but it's like you're I, like positively affecting all these people's lives. Even producing like a single music event, you're, you've got bartenders, you've got door people, you've got all these characters involved that the average person just goes and like sees a band and like, that's it. And they're like, oh, the band, pay $10 to the door, it goes to the band. Actually like there's a whole entire tree under, you know, there's an iceberg, you see the tip, like, under the water this like this is where 90 percent of it is and that's kind of like the vinyl ranch thing it's like people think it's a meme page or they think like oh it's a t-shirt company or they think i don't know what they think but every time i meet someone they always have a different perspective and interpretation of what it is 
and it's actually like that's one wow. element but it's actually that's one color on the palette but there are like 10 other colors that you haven't seen yet um and some of them don't reveal themselves for like another two years like the record label stuff that's kind of been in the operating in the background for a minute and now it's like rolling out this year but i still haven't really formally announced it and i had changed my instagram profile deal to say record label for a minute and i took it away i was like no i'm gonna like just come out with it you know mm -hmm. just flip it wow flip the switch so i guess formally technically i've formally announced it here well wow. well thank you for cool. that. Yeah, thanks. you've actually um as you were talking you have clarified something that i've been struggling with with my platform and what yeah. i'm doing um but you just answered it with the whole like yeah very profound for me of like doing it for the music and for the yeah. artist. Cause that's something with a business people are trying to figure out, you know, mm -hmm. there's the influencer, there's promo, there's all this stuff, but yeah. I, well, yeah, you've definitely just answered my, I was asking what I should do and you just answered it right there, but doing things for the art. And I've always lived for that, but it's like this struggle too of like, you know, it's my, what's my time worth? Mm -hmm. What's this worth? But at the end of the day, like it is for the artist. So thank you for that. I don't yeah. even, just as you were talking, that thank all, clarifies. Thank all the artists and thank everyone. Well, they're amazing, yeah. And that's, it's that's, community effort always, whether people acknowledge it or not. Like, you, nobody truly does anything on their own. Like, you, so true. You can go. You can go. There's a distance you can go to by doing anything on your own, but you can. It, it stops, and then it's like you need <laughs> lots of yeah. Well, yeah. Feet on I, the ground I definitely to carry out. You know, whatever master plan you have. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, because now I've, I feel way more on course with what I'm about to do. So, well, I know you discussed at one point like you wanted to bring more people on, like, and not, not say ambassadors. I hate to use that word, but like ambassadors. Or yeah. Well, and so, and this is probably leaning in towards, um, but yeah, I guess what like for what I've been struggling with is like monetizing off of things. Yeah. And it's like, okay, at what point is like what costs benefit is my time, you know? And like talking to a really <clears throat> who's a friend who's a really well-known artist here in Austin yesterday, you know, he sees the value in me and he called me up yesterday. He's like, Clarissa, I have a show. I was like, okay, you know, just like all of them. And he's like a lot of them, they mm -hmm. send me all their stuff. And he's like, I want to pay you. I want to do this. And you know, I see the value in you. And he's like, you helped me sell out this show that I had and I want to sell it out again. Mm -hmm. But even then, it didn't feel right. There was something inside mm. me that's like, I don't feel right taking money from the artist. Like, I don't want to do that. But then, but they're going to give the money to someone else. Well, that's so, what he said. Yeah, you know, true. he's like, I'm either going to give it to you or give it to someone else. But that is something that I, I just I struggle with because it's, you know, I'm like, even for my time, it's almost like a sliding scale <laughs> for artists. No, totally. The bigger you are, obviously, yeah. those things. But it is, you know, and I think like that even kind of clarifies it for me because I'm I struggle with that because mm -hmm. it's like I don't my platform is not for that, but then at what cost to my time? Because it yeah. is, it does take time to promote and do those things. So yeah, maybe I won't feel so guilty about it, but. No, I think on their creative services side of like helping out musicians, people will take you and themselves more seriously when they have to pony up some money to like pay for it. Oh, that's true. So even like having Good your point. friend who's a graphic designer. I really like, appreciate that hey, insight. Will you make my album art? They're like, yeah, sure. While the paying gigs are coming in, you're, you, on, you, where you rank on the priority ladder, mm. it keeps getting pushed and pushed down. Because, I mean, that's, I totally, I totally get it. I'm sure you do too. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I that's think, something that I struggle with as a creative yeah. and also as this. Like, I want to help them, but I don't want to take money from, but he's like, he literally said that. He's like, I'm going to give it to you or do 512. Yeah. And I was like, well, shit, give it to me. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> and, so, and that's what he said. He's like, I'd rather help you out mm -hmm. than do that. So I appreciate that. And. Yeah, we've kind of talked about the business of it. There's so many things that go on behind the mm -hmm. scenes that people have no idea that you and I right, kind right. of go through with PR firms and marketing mm -hmm. firms and all these these engines that are fueling this. Yeah, I call them, I've I've recently started to call them the necessary evils <laughs> because <laughs> I, I never wanted to invest money in like real PR people, real managers, real X Y Z, all the things that you are made to believe help you excel and like move to the next rung on the ladder but it's totally a necessary evil because the industry still operates under that whole model. As much as you think it does, it, as, as, as much as you think you can jump and leap over that, like you really can't. And the people that do, that's like a one in a million, one in a trillion Interesting. situation. You, you absolutely should have a team, build a team to like push you forward. You can't do it 
I'm like, you can't do it on your own. Like people, uh, I, you know, I watch people write you their know, own press yeah. releases, yeah. design their own merch, their own posters. I'm like, okay, that's cool for a minute, but everything kind of looks like shit. It's not cohesive. There's no like design theory here. Like everything is suffering. So investing yourself by investing, investing yourself by bringing people onto your team that are actually like experts in their fields and then everything moves forward. Like, Have you seen organizer. yourself exponentially grow from that? Um, I've are you seen, seen growth, your s- for growth. sure. Yeah, yeah. But I've only recently invested in a manager, going to get a booking person. But I don't know if I want a booking person anymore because I don't know if I really want to continue down this path. That yeah. was so, what was so funny about taking a break for that long. It's like, man, I don't think I really want to be doing this that much longer. So I don't know if I really want to invest in getting a booking agent. But I also, if I am going to do it a little longer, I want to maximize the hell out of it mm-hmm. while I still do it. So I'm still like having that. Struggle. That's like a like, 180 like, from when I first met you. Yeah, yeah. You like wanted to be on the road, like nonstop. You were like, I, I'm so used mm-hmm. to this, this grind and doing yeah. this and doing that and being here and no, being I there. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to chill. Yeah. But you also like to travel. But you like to. I, but now you get to go do it on your time and you on your. If you want to lay in bed and you know, or if you want to go run at seven o'clock, whatever you want to yeah, do, right, it's right. on your time for sure. Versus and still, now, and I still do that. But I just like the idea of. I don't know. I don't want everyone to feel like I'm doing the same thing forever, like at any point in my life. So I'm always like, you you, you watch me move around all the time, like everyone does. I'm yeah. Like moving somewhere or living somewhere. I mean, yeah, you went for, to like Marfa for like a week just, just to hang. Yeah, yeah I mean, all these I'm, different I'm, places. I'm always kind of on the, I'm always on the move, but I'm I'm searching for, for new energy and new inspiration in life. And that's kind of what motivates that. So it's not like I have a fear of commitment or a fear of putting roots down someplace. It's like, no, it's kind of like, this whole cowboy thing. It's like, you just want to be, you want to be like, you want to roam, you know, the range, mm-hmm. whatever the, your range is. So just trying to figure out like, how do I continue growing? You got to be on the move all the time. So I, I don't know. That's just well, kind of the, the, the mode I kind of lock into. Yeah. But I feel like Austin really cultivate, like even being like in other places, like out, like going to LA and there's just a different vibe there. There's a different frequency that oh, yeah. people operate there versus like when I go back to Austin, like, from being there, it was like, I don't know. It was just, it's a different, I don't know how to describe it. It's like when I get to Austin, like I was telling him, it's like, I want to go. I mm-hmm. want to like hustle. I want to be on the grind. And then I go to different cities and I, I feel like San Diego. I lived in San Diego for two years. <laughs> That's like vacation mode. Exactly. Nonstop. And everyone different else there is on vacation. You want to go mm-hmm. do all these things, but I, I don't feel the way I feel there that I do here. So it's, yeah, I think, I mean, you're doing the the universe is guiding you to the right place and like you said i think from here it's just going to be like charge you and yeah i hope so energize you and because i feel as energized i like in new york does that for me it's like the most energy yeah motivation like it puts you in like this like animalistic kind of like grind mode for some reason really new york does that for you i think it does it for everybody it's just that frequency and the energy Mm -hmm. in the streets is like very powerful and raw and it's just there's no way to describe. I mean, there is, but Austin makes me feel the same way a little bit. There's just like the energy's high and like temperature's hot. So it's like, there's a lot happening. And it's like when those like hustle town vibes, like you just want to like, there's a lot to do and a lot to accomplish and people yeah. to meet and places to go and you know, all those sorts of things. So I'm excited. Yeah. This, yeah. So thanks. This is the next chapter. Yeah. I'm excited to see what, what this turns into. <laughs> I'm excited to do more yeah. town lake runs. I mean, I hope so. More I hope tacos. I find something else to do. I feel like I'm doing the same. <laughs> I come into town, it's like the same thing every time. And I don't believe, I don't mean that like there's not casting a negative light on that, but it's always like, it's like, it's like the same thing. I run a town lake, get the same restaurants. I just need to branch out and like expand my social, social network a bit. Yeah. I think. I'm just curious and we'll kind of end on this, but what is like, what would be like your perfect day in general? Mm, my perfect day. My perfect day generally <laughs> um, cooking three meals, kicking it at home, listening to music, smoking some weed, <laughs> going on a couple of runs or a hike. I like to exercise like two and three times in a day. So it's generally like a morning or a sunset run, go on a hike somewhere, low pressure, get out into nature. It usually involves like lots of nature time, like quiet, no music. Wow. Yeah, that's like the vibe. That's my perfect day generally, cooking, eating food. For sure. I love to eat food. Awesome. Yeah, it's like right Yeah, there. black squid the squidding pasta. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had that squidding pasta in a hot ass minute. Oh. 
It's I know good. it's dangerous. Well, how can people find you on all the socials? Socials, and everything? all things Vinyl Ranch at Vinyl Ranch on all platforms. Disco Cowboy with a K. Thank you for wearing the shirt. So yes, nice of you. I spell it Disco Cowboy. Like I said, so so few of those T-shirts have. I don't understand that. I don't know. Maybe I it's because I know you. Yeah. Like yeah. I I brought like I literally <laughs> bought this proudly. No, I, thank you. Yeah, no, this the, is such it's such a cool shirt. And we obviously have like I love Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. yeah. And that's a huge inspiration for you and Urban yep. Cowboy, John Travolta. So this was like, but can what is this? Can we can we talk about this for a that's second? That's a trash can full of records. So the t shirt, that actually was a bootleg t shirt that I purchased on eBay. And the front of the t shirt says disco trash. It was like a, one of those uh. slanderous like <laughs> disco sucks shirts. So I repurposed it into my own Disco Cowboy shirt. So the original image had John Travolta coming out of the trash can. It was a different image of him altogether, and he didn't have a cowboy hat on. They were It was one of those like Disco Sucks wow. kind of t-shirts, yeah. My, my version was re-illustrated by this incredible guy, and in, I think he's based in Atlanta. His name's Taylor Rushing, who is like working for Willie Nelson now. Like he's incredible. Like he no should be. No big deal, yeah. Yeah, incredible. But that's shirt. amazing. Well, yeah. very cool. No, I love this shirt and I wear it proudly. Um, it's a vibe, like I said, and I have a lot of Vinyl Ranch yeah, stuff. Yeah. So if no, you thanks do for watching it all the time, man. I, I always, it. well, thank you. I mean, the, everything you have is just super unique and there's nothing, it fits my style yeah. and what I wear and I, I love it. So yeah, definitely check out VinylRanch.com. Thank you, yeah. All the things, Disco Cowboy. Are you private or are you public? I'm, Still, I'm no, I'm public. Vinyl You're public. Ranch is definitely private. Vinyl Ranch is yeah. private. Oh, yeah, okay. Private. See, I follow all these, so I don't yeah, know if they're yeah. private or public. But let me get you on Vinyl Ranch at some point. <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything. No, it doesn't have to <laughs> no, be I'm anything topless. Kidding. It's like yeah. No, I would love. I would be with. honored. Yeah, to cool. do anything sure. with y'all. But yeah, no. Let Thank me know. You. I'm so one of your biggest fans, biggest friends, Ditto. supporters. You, anything that I can do. Um, excited to see tonight. Yeah, you and JT get get wild with it. Ass wild. Thanks. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank See you. you next week. Thanks. Yay.